and the only ones who haven't done it are the USA, Sudan, Iran, and a couple of other places. So uh, it is, it's really a lot on our escutcheon, and we better get busy and get our, our Senate to ratify it. Um, it. It comes up every year in the Senate, so let's, let's be aware of when it's coming up and be sure to let our senators know what to do. The next one is the first to the fact that women have just gotten the amazing honor of being able to get killed in battle. Sincerity. 
let's focus on this with clarity. This world must be better for our kids. The world must be better for our so-called, because we know what all that's about, 
are busy emulating the patterns that we've had. And we have to set a new example. <laughs> we have to set something new in motion that says, yes, we have a lot of privilege and power, and please don't be like us. Please do better than what we've done. And us lead the way in showing what that looks like. So, as wonderful as everything it is that we're doing, we have to go deeper. And we have to assume some of the responsibility for that which is ours to do. This particular piece that I created, um, it just kind of came to me with the culmination of all these wonderful events that were happening at the beginning of the year. The 150th anniversary of the Emancipation Proclamation, Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday, Barack Obama's inauguration. There were a number of different things that were all going on at the same time. Martin Luther King's birthday, this being 45 years of his assassination, and just on and on and on. And I knew after the election that something happened. As wonderful as it was that Obama got in the first time, oh, this second time was sweet. The second time to me said that there was some kind of fundamental shift in our body politic and that we are not going back. We are not going back. Even the most ultimate of the conservatives know a certain day is over. It's gone. This is false. It's gone in the most day. As we stand upon the dawning of this new day, with eyes purified, we see through the lies that have denied the divinity of our humanity, giving cause to pause the full granting of our liberty. Upon the dawning of this new day, we can say, thank you, God, for having brought us from such a mighty long way. The road has not been easy and bittersweet its song. But this rugged journey has made us strong, convinced us that we belong standing here together against systems perpetuating the wrong, marveling at the miracle that we are standing together at all. We are part of the dream the King inspired into imagination. Standing here together in unification for the diversification of our nation. Full of colors and textures, no more conjectures of cookie cutters that cut out everything that doesn't fit within the margins. <laughs> Upon the dawning of this new day, we are opening up to new realities with the courage to create the world that we want to see. No more acquiescence. No more waiting for some hero to bring us justice where it has always been just us. The goodness forever in our hands. Yet we must expand this us to include the ones that we exclude because they intrude upon the privileges which we heretofore have never had to share. Do I dare care about you enough to let you into my comfort zone, knowing that it shatters the moment that I can see that you matter? And what is a comfort zone anyway? But a self-induced sandbox, ready to be transcended with new awareness, new understanding, new experiences that dissipate the leeriness of the weariness of the burden of carrying generations of shame and guilt and ignorance. Upon the dawning of this new day, we declare another way, a new way. We decree that freedom shall reign from every mountainside, and that freedom shall reign from every barrio and ghetto. From Motown to Chinatown, from suburban valleys to skid row alleys, from factories to ivy leagues, prisons to painted deserts, in cities from sea to shining sea, we will retrieve the promise of our creed. That we are created equally and endowed by our creator with the inalienable right to pursue happiness, liberty, and life. And pursue we do, not by 
chance or preordained selectivity, not through legislation or internally oppressed anonymity. Oh, yeah. We will live and we will love boldly, loudly, by divine design and our own audacious incline. We will build bridges over gullies of grief, bulldoze down barriers of poverty. The frozen, the, the virginity of apathy will melt into hot springs of hope. Frozen access will open in a clear open path that greet downtrodden feet where no belly ever be empty in the land full of fruited plains. Where, where our children will have the freedom to grow to know that they are safe and provided for and that any door that they dare to knock on will open because of the purity and the intensity of their own authenticity. We won't wait one more minute for the Senate or the Congress to get us out of this mess. For we possess the strength and the drive to revive our deepest intent, which we will no longer sell to the highest bidder to rent. Each of us is a winner, inheritor of riches of the soul, endowment untold as we unfold into this new dawning, no longer longing, but living the seeds of our creed, liberty and justice for all, finally, finally finding some fertile ground, beyond noble idea and lofty sound, finally finding some Fertile ground. A new foundation for all a solid rock. Not just a single island like an Ellis upon which some are allowed to die. I'm talking about a new foundation upon which we can all stand as brothers and sisters of this nation who collectively demand that together we rise, catching all who fall, letting none slip through past fingers, no matter how small. Upon the dawning of this new day, we will drive away the divisiveness of the otherness that blinds us to our togetherness. As we bear witness to this collective change of heart. Not as voyeurs of history in the making, but as architects of our destiny here for the taking. From the mother of pure light within the soul of our souls, may the boldness of this new wholeness transform the essence of our U.S. presence wherever we go so that none need fear that we are near and that the only thing that our U.S. footprint leaves behind is an imprint of empowerment. Let the heavens rejoice this day that we, by the sheer determination of our heart, have the courage to, 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 to start something new that, 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 that we, by the courage of our hearts, had the audacity and the willingness to redeem our checkered past. And that from this day forward, we set forth a new legacy, a new lineage of compassion and prosperity. The austerity to begin again with a new lens which, like the art of the moral universe, bends towards justice. Upon the dawning of this new day, may it be said that we did not shirk our responsibility to make possibility a reality. Upon the dawning of this new day, may it be said that we, a multiply colored people, had the audacity to start a new kind of revolution, 
where the solution was not one up over one down, but a resounding yes, we can. Yes, we can. Yes, we can. Si se puede. Si se puede. Si se puede. Yes, we can. Yes, we will. Yes, we are. Yes, it is now. As we move from dawning, as we move from dawning and step onto this brand new day. Realize 
what it is I need to do, what charge has been laid before me, and what courage I have within myself if I will just look in there and claim it. And that's for the rest of us. This first poem I'm going to read from Legacy. It's a collection of poems that um, I wrote, and I brought some with me if you have an interest in taking one home. Um, this poem is titled, Audrey Lord. I miss, and I will miss your physical body, though I have never seen you in person, just knowing that you were somewhere sharing the lull of humming bees on lazy summer afternoons or watching sunsets and moon risings with me was comfort. Your strong voice will no longer be raised in auditoriums to eager ears, but your words continue to ring loud and pregnant in lecture halls at dinner among friends and enemies alike. I miss you. You always tottered on precipices thin as wire, threatening to slice you into pieces, wanting to cut your tongue, shut you up, but you stood fast and learned to balance your weight, carry some of mine. You knew I needed your help. You told me to break my silences, confront my perpetrators, to look at my beautiful self and feel who I am. You said, I feel, therefore, I can be free. I am open and trembling, Audrey. You told me poetry is not a luxury, that my poems are stories that must be told, testimonies to the living, Songs for those who are already dead. Weapons on the front lines, necessary as daily bread. You taught me not to be quiet, to expel my rage, not to betray myself, for I would not survive, was not meant to. You taught me to trust myself, risk loving who I am. This is frightening. Yet, in my vulnerability, I am strengthened to face eye to eye myself and fear that would make my tongue mute and my pen silent in this struggle against dehumanization, erasure. Even in your death, you speak truth. You did your work, black woman, poet, teacher, mother, lesbian, and invited me to do mine. I will follow your example. Take the baton and pass it on. Enough 
to absorb love when it spills from some smile, soft eye, kind words, embrace. I have changed myself from fearful servant to autonomous woman. I am not the first. I hold my head high, read in the faces of other black women who made this journey before me that I am brilliant and beautiful, worth loving, worth having, worth fighting for. Harriet Tubman, Fannie Lou Hamer, Barbara Jordan, Ann Allen Shockley, Ella Baker, some of them lesbian, all of them black and woman, determined to be, to grow beyond stereotypes and limitations, to live companionship, friendship, camaraderie among sisters, friends, kin, and lovers. The black woman whom I am connects soul to passion, desire to intellect, spirit to rage, talent to pain, and burst me, full grown and coming into my own black woman lesbian self, a wonder and a miracle. <laughs> tell you that what you already know, I just want to repeat it because I often repeat this to my students. Just because we are using the tools of critical thinking and excavation to look at the ways in which women and men are constructed by the society, look at the ways in which we have internalized Miss misunderstandings, misinformation. Because we use the tools and we name the things that come against us, that seek to eclipse our humanity, that deconstruct us from our humanity, because we look at these things, because we name them, because we name patriarchy, we name white supremacy, we name classism, we name sexism, we name everything that we live in and among and about. It doesn't mean we're hating on the people. It doesn't mean that. So women, just because we talk about sexism, it doesn't mean we're hating on men. Men, just because you hear us talking about sexism and we speak to you about it, it doesn't mean we're hating on you. It means we are sharing information, that we are empowering ourselves in order to be activists, in order to know, instead of being led around because we are afraid and because we are ignorant. We all have ignorance. That's why it's so important for us to educate ourselves, to talk to each other, to come to terms with what we think, what we've been told, and to make some decisions on our own based on information. And you must honor your feelings, but you must also deconstruct your feelings. Do you really feel bad? Or did somebody tell you that's how you should feel, so you think you feel bad? Do you understand what I'm saying? Of course you do. So I just want to say that. Now this uh, next poem that I'm going to share with you is a question. And the title is, Who is Woman? I'm going to sit with that for a minute while I have a drink of water. <laughs> this is my wife, y'all. Thank you. Her name is Ree. Her name is Ree, and uh, I, I am so blessed. And we've been sharing our lives together for 22 years now. Woo! <laughs> the kids grown and gone, that was a good thing. We have nine grandchildren that we share, that's not a good thing. Um, who is woman? She is flesh and bone, blood and marrow a living being, 
Man is part of her inside and out. Woman is the source and nurturer of life, an incubator and teacher of culture. Woman is made responsible for the woes of human existence. She labors against a bad reputation when she doesn't follow through with the duties, roles, expectations that have been imposed on her. Women punish women for not being subservient to men, for not being willing to lower their standards to male notions of who they are. Who is woman? She is strong and weak, beautiful and ugly, determined and hopeless, a fighter and a casualty, mother, not mother, feminine, not feminine, good, not good, lesbian, not lesbian, whore and virgin, celibate, and sexually active. She is young, middle, between, and old, free, slave, rich, poor, handicapped, and able-bodied, hearing, and deaf, intelligent, and foolish, mute, and vociferous, educated, and illiterate, afraid, and courageous, a murderer and a giver of life. She is fat, tall, skinny, short, happy, and sad, a singer, a song, a seer, an insomniac, and a sleeper. She is African, Indian, Asian, European, Native American, Ashanti, Crow, French, German, Italian, Irish, Filipino, Puerto Rican, Russian, Guatemalan, Mexican, Navajo, Blackfoot, Cheyenne, Pacific Islander, Jewish, Catholic, Baptist, Spiritualist, Atheist, Muslim, Pentecostal. She is a fruit picker, truck driver, auto mechanic, educator, senate woman, judge, pastora, and high priestess, congresswoman, corporate leader, bad woman, homeless, displaced, grandmother, aunt, grand, godmother, HIV positive, living with AIDS, full blown, dying, dead. A woman is not too fragile to do a day's work. She works hard and endlessly, yet she and her children are the poorest on the planet. A woman is beaten, knived, raped, disemboweled, vivisected, fucked, and fucked over by sexism, belief in male superiority. She is not a punching bag, though often used that way. She is not a veiled wonder, here for objectification and ownership. A woman is not second class, not weaker than men, needs somebody to hold on to, hysterical. She is not a delicate rose. She bleeds, aches, perseveres, does battle, challenges silence, death, oppression. A woman is more than you can imagine. I am a woman. Of the uh, US. And we mostly watch videos about activism and 
just learn about the world and really how we can help it when we grow old and how we can continue to fight for it whenever, wherever, anytime. And so my mom mostly puts it on for us. She does like a great job. And these are my two best friends and we all learn about it together, which is really fun. And that's pretty much what we do. Okay, so the first thing we'll be talking about is a video on wealth inequality in the U.S. that we watched maybe a month ago. And it's really talking about how they took a very large survey of Americans and what they thought the wealth distribution in the U.S. should be. And most of them thought that the rich should be about 10% or 10 times more wealthy than the poorest people, but they thought that the wealthy was 100 times more wealthy than the poorest people in reality, but the sad reality is the top 1% is really a 1,000 times more wealthy than the rest of America, pretty much. And so it's been about like 1% of the U.S. has 40% of the wealth in this country, and the bottom 70% have about 7% of the wealth. So it's really unequal, and it was mostly just talking about how it really creates poverty and problems, and I think it was really interesting. My name is Cassandra Caraggio. Uh, my name is Fatima, and um, we watched an interview with the director of a documentary called Brave This World, which is a film about Miss Israel, who won the Miss World Beauty Pageant in 1998, of, uh, soon after she was brutally raped. After um, her victory in the Miss World competition, she went on to become a great, like, an advocate for rape victims from, and interviewed many women who told her their stories, and she encouraged them to speak out. And we also took a field trip downtown for the V-Day dance to end violence against women and girls um, as part of the events of One Billion Rising. Um, my name is Jasmine, and for time we took a break on watching documentaries, and we watched a ton of films with um, Sydney Poitier. Um, the first film we watched was A Patch of Blue, which is about um, how he friends a blind girl and helps her out of tough, tough situation. And then we watched To Serve With Love which is him being a high school teacher to a class of seniors in a rough neighborhood, and he gives them, I guess, the belief that they can pursue anything they want to, but no one was teaching them that. And then we watched um, Guess Who's Coming to Dinner, which is about an interracial marriage where a white girl brings um, home Sydney to meet her parents and announce their engagement. And the last film we watched is um, In the Heat of the Night, which is when he plays a homicide detective who helps solve a case where he is first thought to be a suspect in the racist town in Alabama. Um, the fourth movie that we watched is called The Dakota 38, and that was a movie about the Dakota War of 1862 which was a Native American tribe called the Dakota, and they fought against the American government when they tried to take all of their land like many of the Native Americans have suffered. And what happened was the American government decided to do the largest mass hanging of them ever in American history, which was 38 Native Americans were going to be hanged, and they were, 
And so now, present day, a bunch of Native American leaders and supporters go and they, they ride horses right down the path where they had to walk because they, they decided to exile them to Dakota. And so many Native Americans had to do what was seen as like the second trail of tears to go to South Dakota where they were exiled. So they trekked back, back to the original place where they were hanged to remember all that happened and the real tragedies that have occurred and are still occurring to the poverty-stricken Native Americans. We watched a TED Talk by Kayla, a singer, a songwriter, on the Hip Hop Shakespeare Company. He's half Scottish and half Caribbean, and he used his TED Talk to compare the similarities between hip hop and um, Shakespeare. <laughs> um, he read lines to the audience and asked them whether it was from hip hop or from Shakespeare, and it revealed that um, <laughs> most of the lyrics in hip hop were about as profound as many of the great writings from a long time ago. We also watched his music video for his song called Find No Enemy that talks about the struggles between being in between cultures and says the only way that we can ever change anything is to look in the mirror and find no enemy. We watched another film called The Beware, which was about the Hampshire Organic Food Revolution. Revolution, and it was taking took place in France in a town called Rajat, where because they were noticing that children were getting cancers from the foods the mayor and the city council decided to start serving locally grown organic food and the school cafeterias. And it, I mean, so, yeah. Then me and, not these two, but me and my two sisters watched all of the Oliver Stone's Untold History of the United States which is 10 hours in total, but it's an hour long for each part of it. And it really tells you about US history and teaches you what most would call the real history of the United States. And it mostly talks about the atomic bomb and really like Henry Wallace, who was a great untold hero for he, really tried to stop the atomic bomb and he was the, I mean, FDR's vice president for three of his terms, but the last term where FDR died, he decided to be overruled and not be vice president, even though it could have stopped the whole atomic bomb from dropping if he was president when FDR died. But instead, we got a less noteworthy Truman, which I'm not a big fan of. Um, but I think it was really interesting because it really told about how World War II was a lot like our situation in Vietnam where sometimes it was like the Japanese really were about to surrender before we dropped the atomic bomb. And there was almost no reason except it was believed that Truman didn't want the Russians to get credit for winning World War II despite having had many, many soldiers die for the cause and being completely poverty stricken afterwards because they had dedicated their lives to defeating the Germans, but Truman wanted it to be known as America defeating the Germans, so he decided, or the Japanese I mean, and so he decided to drop the bomb. And I think it was really interesting because you see all these heroes and you hear the debates, but 
once you get behind the scenes, things become a little more gray. And I think it's more interesting because I really love history, and I don't think I want to learn a lie. We saw a film called Jesus Camp about an evangelical youth camp and its activities, and also saw a preview of the movie The Innocence of Muslims, a horrible film that completely defamed the whole religion of Islam and sparked Egyptian and Libyan attacks on the embassy. And we found out that there was a large sum of money that was put towards the like production and distribu distribution of the film, and we're wondering why that would be so. And we also analyzed the Coney 2012 campaign and looked at whether it was propaganda to just get the U.S. public to <clears throat> send in military to Africa. invasion of the Philippines that um, and how he was trying to he was trying to make peace between the US Americans and his people and his own son uh, ran away to drain the guerrillas in the mountains which was a resistance to the Amer American soldiers being in their land that was like by his brother um, but the mayor uh, was being pursued by the soldiers to lead, to lead them to the guerrilla fighters so they could stop their resistance. And in the end, Amigo ended up dying, I guess, for his people. Um, as the fourth movie I'll be talking about, we watched the very powerful film called La Mamba, which was about Beatrice Lumumba of the Congo, who was the first Prime Minister of the Congo. And I had read a book for school, a nonfiction book, which I got to choose, and I decided to re read King Leopold's Ghost, which is a book about the Belgians and what they did to the Congo as they ended up making it into a colony, but very, very brutally. I mean, obviously they really damaged all of their societies and they enslaved the people and forced them to do rubber harvesting, which it was just a very terrible time in the Congo. And the Congo with Lumumba was really on its way to recovery. I mean, Lumumba was a very amazing man. He stuck out his neck at a time where heads were rolling all over the place. And he, he tried his best for the people. He was brought up with the people in jail. He even fought. He was always fighting. And it was really amazing to see such a man try his best for his country, even when they were fighting against him because they just didn't know. I mean, the people decided to rise up against the militarization that was still in place. And it was really inspiring to see, but eventually they ended up catching up with him and he was executed and very brutally beaten and then executed. And a new prime minister took his place, not one that anyone was very fond of because he favored militarism. And But I thought it was a really inspiring movie. So we all serve at something called Food the Hood, a small dinner party that is put on by Teresa, and where we raise money from donations to give to global charities. This year we raised money to replace crops in from the flood in Haiti and help build a virtual library in Jos, Nigeria and allowed peace workers to accompany villagers under threat in Honduras. 
and supported indigenous Mayans in Guatemala and helped provide science books to children in East Jordan. Children of the Tsunami, which is about the, um, the 2011 Japanese disaster and the Fukushima nuclear meltdown, which was through the voices of 7 to 10 year olds who lost their friends and classmates in their homes during the flood. And with the nuclear meltdown, it showed how kids, like children, their parents can't let them go outside until they check the toxic levels outdoors and how they have to walk around with masks so they don't breathe in so much in the air. Okay, for the last movie I'll be presenting, we watched Me and My Mother, a big fan of John Stewart and Stephen Colbert's political comedy shows. And but we think John Stewart has a very realistic view on most of the political propaganda and wars and things like that. And so he had a very funny man, John Oliver, do an interview with UNESCO and why we cut off the funding and the Palestine-Israeli conflict, which was very funny because it pointed out that UNESCO does amazing work for that benefits not only America, but millions of others many children, women, they're a very wonderful company and we just completely cut off all money for them just because they supported Palestine and it, how really honestly ridiculous some of it is. And so I think that was funny and interesting. Um, we watched Landfill Harmonic a short video about children in Brazil who play in a symphony on instruments that they've made out of collected trash and how they've used the material that they had to enrich their lives further. And um, we saw a, a montage of photos about where children sleep and show the bedrooms of uh, many children around the world, including a child beauty contestant in Kentucky and young children like the seven-year-old in Nepal who works in a granite quarry. And we also saw a documentary, a well, short documentary, about a boy from Sierra Leone who built an FM transmitter and runs his own radio show. And he was brought to MIT to be able to experiment with the um, resources that they have over here that he couldn't get access to in his home. Um, we launched a short little video on instant grants in the park, which was about 10 art students who raised $100 each and then pulled their money together to, do, um, to give out instant grants in New York City. Um, they People told them what they wanted to do and how much they need to do do it while a woman typed on a manual typewriter. With two, within two hours, they had a ceremony where they gave out the money. And we also watched another video called 22 Random Acts of Kindness, which was a guy in India who decided to do 22 nice things for people on his 22nd birthday. Um, he, some of the acts that he did was he brought balloons to an orphanage, gave apples and water bottles out, and brought yellow roses to nurses in a hospital, plus 18 other acts of kindness. Um, all of the videos and other ones that we are currently watching now are on our website. So please visit university.us, that's university, university university.us, and click on the class for Girl Up. Thank you for letting us. Are there any questions? Or anybody want to say anything? Because, yeah. <coughs> I'm wondering if any of you have an idea of what you want to do with this wealth of information and thinking in, in, the, in the future. Yes. I want to be a Supreme Court Justice when I grow up. Oh.
I really think I want to be a judge or like, I'm hoping that I can at least be like a federal judge when I grow up. And I really think that justice is kind of my passion because I really, history is just kind of like the test of time. And I think that's really the only test I really believe in. And I really want to see if I can make a difference for a lot of people, not only myself. Um, well, I'm very passionate about art, and I'd like to become an artist in the future. And, <laughs> and I think that using art as a vehicle to introduce new ideas to the public is a really great way to increase uh, like advocacy and um, introducing new ideas through my art would be really great from all the things that I've learned, and sharing that would be amazing. I guess, um, I guess in the future, I kind of, kind of want to be a writer. And I guess with all the things that I've learned, I guess I can voice my opinions and what I think of things that are going on. Our future leaders. Our future. Yeah. Our future leaders.